Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Not lie. That is the only reason why they failed in their mission. What is interesting as well is that they stated that um, originally, uh, according to them, the person who was supposed to go was the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, but because he was busy, they are the ones who went. So this suggests that the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs knew about their mission to go and see JJ and to try to make him change his mind about whom he saw and to change uh, his evidence. If that is so, that is extremely worrying. It means that Honorable Jack Mwembu must hold a press conference where he will clearly state if indeed he knew before those two went to see JJ that they were going to see him for that mission. Secondly, what he told them they should do when they go and see JJ. <coughs> Thirdly, what they reported back to him about the mission to go and see JJ. And fourthly, whether he feels it was right for people who are not public prosecutors to engage in a, a plea bargain deal. He is a lawyer. He's a lawyer, isn't he? He knows <laughs> in state council. Yes, oh, yes, state state council. <laughs> he knows what is required. And he needs to clearly tell the nation whether those two went with his blessings and what he had told them to go and do. Madam President, you are right. The cat is stinking. <laughs> Badly. <laughs> Badly stinking. <laughs> you know? And they need to come out and clear the air of this stink. Otherwise, this stink will not go away. They cannot just sit back and hope that with time this will go away. It won't. And we are talking about liberties of an individual. So that is the call we have for them. Um, whilst I've got uh, your attention here, I'll still into the time of this uh, presser to just make a few announcements about uh, what uh, UCA is going to be uh, doing. Um, we are going to be uh, going back and having direct uh, interaction with the people uh, because we managed to finally break the back of resistance of this government to public rallies uh, with our Kitwe rally, as you saw, that very successful rally that we had. And, uh, and now that uh, that door has been opened and we have shown that even when we have rallies, they are extremely peaceful. We are very sure that there will be no reason to stop us having the rallies we've planned for the near future. The first one is going to be in Sanfia uh, on the 20th of July. We have asked our uh, one of our parties, that is the Citizens First, to actually give notification to the authorities of the Sanfia rally. It will be a very successful big rally and uh, you'll be 
having an opportunity those who cannot travel to Zambia to actually also watch it live because uh, what we'll be saying will be for the whole nation. Of course you all remember that uh, our Mandevu rally was savagely stopped by the UPND and this uh, government and so uh, we still owe the people of Mandevu uh, a visit and I would like to let them know that we have not forgotten them and we are coming to Mandevu on the 27th of July 2024 uh, for a rally and uh, it is going to be headed by the New Heritage Party. I think uh, my colleague here can confirm. Yes, very happy to. <laughs> and they can tell the people as to how ready they are. <laughs> um, we, we, we will be holding this rally uh, where we want to share with the nation our plans. I mean, we hear a lot of people saying, oh, you, you just attack you know the UPND but that that's what we what UCA is not about attacking the UPND UCA is about the solutions that we will be bringing to the people and that's what we shall be discussing at that run thank you thank you um, the other thing that uh, we'll be doing is uh, there is a Black Friday uh, campaign which has been uh, started and uh, as UCA, we feel that this is the right kind of thing that uh, should be happening in our country. And so we fully endorse the Black Friday campaign and we shall be asking all our members to actively participate in the Black Friday campaign. And uh, uh, there are many other issues that uh, we want to uh, ensure that we uh, bring to the people of Zambia for them to be able to participate in the affairs of their country. Chair, maybe you could uh, share what the black campaign... Please go ahead. So, uh, the black campaign... Black, black Friday campaign is... Uh, there are some young people, not Oka, some young people who want to start um, uh, this campaign that every Friday we dress in black, we honk at a certain time and, and just carry the message and it's against the high cost of living, the high fuel prices, the Zesco issues, you know, they give you um, they, they give you a, a program and say we'll, we'll um, uh, cut the power at such and such a time and they never follow that program. So it's about all the issues that are impacting on the livelihoods of Zambians. So these young people are totally, totally fed up. And we are saying, you know what, we'll join that, we'll endorse that Black Friday uh, um, campaign. Thank you. And uh, on the Black uh, Friday campaign, I heard uh, some people in the UPND saying that, oh, this is uh, an UCA <laughs> thing, uh, these young people have been uh, paid by UCA. And I was saddened that the UPND feel that the young people of this country do not have a mind of their own. That is what they are telling the young people. The young people are very, very vibrant. They are the future of our country. And they are talking about things which are very, very important for everybody. And to trivialize it by saying, no, they've been bought and sponsored by uh, UCA is unfair on them, totally unfair. Um, whilst uh, we're going on, I was reminded about some of the things that were said by uh, the two PSs in the oppressor. One of the things they said is uh, they were asking how did the family members of um, JJ uh, all get to be told that he had been found. And uh, this just shows 
the kind of pettiness that uh, the, the government and the PSS have over this issue. He clearly stated um, at the police and even his uh, wives who were also uh, interviewed and interrogated at the police the time he was taken there that when he went missing as a family it was as if there was a funeral they all came and they were all staying in one of his sister's houses all of them his mother everybody all the other sisters the wives they were all staying in one place when uh, he was rescued in Kafue, the people where he went asked whom they could ring and he gave the number of his mother you know just like remember George Floyd who was killed in the States when he was when the knee was on his neck the first person that you think of is your mother you know so he thought of his mother and he gave them the number for his mother and his mother was there at the, the funeral wake you know because they were they, they were, didn't know what to expect so they were all together like they're at a funeral so immediately with that one call the entire family knew that he had been found immediately they all heard all of them got onto their phones and they were starting to tell their friends other relatives who were not there that he had been found you can imagine the excitement they had so it is not surprising that the word spread very quickly naturally it would have spread very quickly so to start asking as to how it is that within a short time they all knew it is i think very unfair the other thing that they said uh, in their presser is that uh, uh, JJ was not injured and he had no injuries. Um, I have here with me a report from a government hospital that is in Kafue and uh, uh, for those of you who may want i will give you copies where government doctors from kafue general hospital clearly state um, that he had let me just get to it Doctors yeah, right. <laughs> doctors' writings are very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> he had injuries and uh, the, uh, developed backache. He had abdominal pains. Um, that he had uh, injuries. Painful tongue. Uh, painful tongue. They've got it all, all here. He had uh, multiple body injuries multiple body injuries that is a government hospital like i said this will be provided to you so for people to keep on saying no he didn't have injuries and so on why would a government hospital the first hospital he went to the one in kafue have issued this report so let's not try to bring smoke and mirrors uh, to get people's minds away from the real issue. The real issue is the man was abducted, the man was tortured, the man had injuries. That is the real issue. What we need to concentrate on is now can we find who did this to him? Not to start asking, oh, how did his relatives uh, get to know? <laughs> <laughs> and so on you know have a bit of humanity have a, just a little bit of humanity the other thing they talked about is uh, and falsely claimed that he had asked for clothes to be given to him 
that is not true and they know that that is not true what happened is um, some people believe that uh, you can use diviners and so on to uh, to solve issues he was missing some of his relatives said let us get a piece of his clothing and take that uh, piece of clothing it happened to be a pair of trousers to a diviner so that the diviner can use that to be able to uh, to, to, to divine as to where he is being held or where his body can be found one trousers now for them to then say that uh, uh, that was the trousers was to be taken to him and he knew where he was first of all why get the trousers all the way from Petauke why not from Lusaka he's got lots of clothes here and why would he need just one pair of trousers they actually went and picked up that relative because there was a message on the phone like I said and brought him overnight drove him to Lusaka interrogated him and then that's when they found that that theory of theirs was rubbish and he was released they didn't drive him back unfortunately he had to be thrown away back. <laughs> that's how bad they are <laughs> you know um, and, and uh, so you can see that these PSs even on things they know they want to create a false narrative let them stop playing games let's have them answer the 27 questions that my colleague has asked thank you all right that's all right for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below i'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.